Welcome to the bold analysis. I want in this video to look at something that happened today in the morning when Kanini Kega was ejected from Jubilee stand during uh, the political parties festival, the People's Festival, that is going on at Nairobi Museum. But before I look at that, I know that attention of the country is on what Raila, Raila's plot, Raila's plan. I saw this video sitting on your screen, and uh, I've seen it, this photo rather, it's being shared, and I want just to review that photo a bit. Uh, Raila is putting on, I think that is the regalia that uh, the M Movement for Democracy and Defense of Democracy were putting on. And um, I have not seen the rest of Azimio leaders. I'm only seeing, there's only one photo that has come out, that of him. And it has been shared, it was actually shared by, um, if I'm not wrong, it was shared by Gaucho. Uh, Gaucho is the person that shared that. Um, Gaucho is the person that shared that that photo. So I was just wondering where are the rest, <laughs> or what exactly is going on. Now, if you look at that, it can look perhaps as a residence. Maybe it's well doing as residence or somehow, but it also looks like somewhere else. So ladies and gentlemen, I want us to, I don't know what to make. Uh, personally, I have a feeling that um, maybe, you never know, um, maybe some might chicken out <laughs> as of what happened in 2017. Now, this is the video I'm talking about. I want you to watch that video here. Clearly, this is what happened, and I've, I've just tried to gather to call some few journalists who are there. When Kanini Kega arrived, he went straight to two stands. One of the stands was that of Jubilee Party and another party. Not Jubilee, UDA Party and another party. When he got in, he did not go straight to the Jubilee stand. Now what's happening there is that is normally a festival. I attended it last year. Last year it was in, um, it was not in Nairobi Museum, it was somewhere. Yeah, it was in Nairobi Museum, it was the same place. And uh, what normally happens in that festival is political parties normally just, um, they showcase uh, activities, membership, what they meant, or maybe just things about those political parties. It's, a, it's actually a political parties festival, and that's why it's called People's Dialogue Festival. Yeah, it's People's Dialogue Festival, but it's just for political parties to, exe to, to exhibit what they have, the membership. So you will always receive, when you go to that stand, you're just going to know what party X is doing, this party is doing. Kega did not go straight to Jubilee stand. And he, after that, honestly, I think that was a wrong decision and that was demeaning because if you are a member of Jubilee and you really have the Jubilee in your heart, then there is nothing wrong visiting the other stands. Actually, that's the arrangement that you should visit all. Even if you belong to one political party, you should visit all the stands so that you know what political party X is doing, what that political party is doing. So, there is no problem. But, if you really mean well, and you had good intentions for Jubilee Party, then you would have just visited 
the Jubilee stand. So, and I can tell you that is why, so he had, they had spotted him there. When he tried then to go and see what the Jubilee party are doing, then the youths there were a bit um, uncomfortable with that. And, and I want just to put a very clear point here. This is coming uh, moments after, um, this is coming moments after, uh, let me say, the party gave up, um, uh, um, party has been going through some very difficult moments as far as uh, the Rangos are concerned because Kanini Kega has been leading a couple of um, activities or rather Oster plans to overtake the party and the cases at the political parties tribunal, it's still going on. Now, while he might have had the good intention, but you must give credit where it's due. Amidst all those wrangles, Kanini Keka has done extremely well in holding that party. He's been holding meetings with different caucus at the Jubilee headquarters, this gentleman, Kanini Kega, only went to Jubilee headquarters once after they planned their own, that coup. They came there and they were, they were overtaking the office and after, after some time the case was taken to tribunal and then they disappeared. So I have understanding that those young people, the, the people, the clerics, the, 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 the people that were in charge of that event, of, of Jubilee stand, the whole event was highly coordinated only by Kanini Kega, uh, by Jeremiah Kioniwe. I have seen him blaming Jeremiah Kioni for that, but I would just ask, did Jeremiah Kioni know he was going there? Because it's not a must. You know, he can just ghost. <laughs> he can just ghost on them. I, I don't think he might have told, unless he tried to make efforts asking what's going on, then Jeremiah Kioni asked those people. However, it points out to what has been going on behind the scene that Jeremiah Kioni is trying to win the support of those who are Jubilee members against those other people. If a Canadian Kega wanted to go there, number one, you would have just organized prior. You know there is nothing wrong. I don't think there is bad blood. You can fix a meeting, go to Jubilee headquarters, meet with uh, Jeremiah Kioni. You guys have a sit down. Even go with, uh, with, uh, with the Sabina Chege and the other members. So that you just create a good relationship first, so that you don't just go there and bump in. Remember you're bumping at a moment when things are not that good and you have been branded as a person that wants to take over that party. Hostility that he met there, according to me, will just to, was just to serve as a warning that we are not happy with you. And I've been saying this. Um, with the latest developments going on, the current troubles Uhuru Kenyatta is going through in the hands of William Bruto's administration, it is necessary to avoid some dramas because Uhuru is simply slowly winning back some sympathy. You know when Uhuru left power, um, that those from Mount Kenya that were still high, you know, the messaging was still in their minds that Uhuru is a bad man and Uhuru this and Uhuru that. But as things go with the latest developments, people are not seeing the change. Um, Mount Kenya is protesting more than any other region in this country. There seems to be understanding that people are saying, okay, I think not that it was such a perfect decision to elect William Ruto. Now, with the troubles going after Uhuru Kenyatta, um, regime and some of these people being led by even one of their own however much we might look at if we are trying to do some revisit to those people that hurted us but Uhuru might be winning some sympathy I, I would just want to argue this way do you want to tell me that all those who are chasing uh, Jeremiah Kioni because that time that place are the other people not that all those they are supporters of, of UDA don't you think that because it's public and they are supporters of different parties, don't you think they would have shielded him? Now that he even went and visited the UDA tent, and UDA supporters are also there, you would have created, you would have seen a situation where even those UDA supporters that are there are trying to shield him, or they're insisting that he must be there. But that shows you that at the end of the day, I think they need to see 
that things are not as very up for. If um, I look at um, Kega as if that he might be looking for some public ejection from the party, perhaps some sympathy. You know, that attempt even to take over that party, to me, I can say, he, they didn't want the party. You know, they don't need that party, if, I, if you ask me. Because the truth of the matter here is, the Kennedy Kegas want to contest in 2027, and they'll be more comfortable as things go via under Uda. So, the lie that they want to coalesce around Jubilee Party, according to me, does not hold. The Jubilee Party story, their, their interest is not the Jubilee Party. But they, they were just trying to look for opportunity to create a divorce. And it has been affected at that level. Um, going there, probably he was expecting that he was going to meet that reception. But what did he opt for? He opted to, for that to go so that he can receive that public rejection. I have a very clear point. I think it is not wrong because Kanini Kega should be told. Party hoping or moving from one party to the other is not um, it's not illegal, but you can just officially decamp from Jubilee and go to UDA or other party without the fiasco because according to me, I think the fiasco is a bit unnecessary. Um, you can you can decamp. I don't know, you, you cannot even, and in fact, he cannot even lose that position as Ayala. If Jubilee revokes, then what does it mean? Probably... Um, he will still go and present his candidature and UDA will still vote for him on that. Because in terms of agreement on who goes to Yala is normally a gentleman agreement between the political parties that we're going to give that party and we're going to, no, we are not going to give the other party. So this, this should be seen and, and of course he has a job at the Yala. Some of these dramas are a bit unnecessary and he's causing the tension within the party that according to me it's not there. Well, in real sense, his interest is not in Jubilee Party. The person that is trying to hold and trying to walk in the shadow of Ray Odinga in holding that party is Jeremiah Kioni. So if he means well, if Kanini Kegas means well for Jubilee Party, let them run, let them leave Kioni to run the party.